Here we've got an era kit, uh, originally built 1970, crash tender, fireboat as it's better known. This is the four foot version. Um, it was refurbished by myself a couple of years ago. I'm constantly changing things and upgrading and tinkering. I've just been tinkering with the sound unit in it. Okay, so there's the boat. Most of the fittings were made by myself. It's twin screw and we run contra rotating three brake propellers. The exhausts are the water outlet for the cooling, motor cooling, it's twin brushless. Okay, so uh, the first thing that I like is the searchlight. Obviously works off channel 5 on my DX6 transmitter. I've also got a Hobby King light unit, uh, so there's the nav lights, mass lights, navigation lights. I've got the wheelhouse, hopefully you can see in there. Engine room and cabin. So that's nice if it ever gets to sail in the dark, which it doesn't really. But it's nice to have. <coughs> particularly like the wheelhouse. I spent ages trying to make that something nice. Okay, uh, I've also got the sound unit. I've got two Mr. RC Sound V4.1 boat units tucked away in there. Uh, I've got them wired up to a mix so they both work independently for each motor. And the mix is between throttle and a redundant channel, which is the rudder, the left stick, left and right. It's rudder on an aeroplane. My rudder's over here. For okay, by using the mix on the transmitter, I can start the throttle, and then with the mix switch, I've assigned it to there, I can start the second motor slightly behind the other. So you've got two engine sounds slightly staggered. Uh, the trouble is when they start you won't be able to hear me talk, so we'll give it a go. We'll throttle up now. The one on this side will start. The TT25 transducers are stuck to the hull via 5-6mm uh, foam, uh, so I'll be able to feel the vibrations. So if we turn the mix off, so now I've just got the throttle working on its own. Once that fires up I can flick the mix and that will bring the second motor engine sound online. So there's the first one. There's the second one. So both sounds are V12 Merlins, they're taken from the RC plane uh, sound cards that Mr. RC Sound makes. So there's a bit of prop noise at the beginning which wouldn't be that authentic on a boat, but it doesn't really matter does it? <coughs> uh, this boat ran V8 Meteors, so to have a V8 Merlin is pretty similar, it's the same engine really. Uh, it sounds a little bit tinny out of the water, you've got to bear in mind when it's in the water. Uh, the hull dampens down the sound a bit. That sound level currently is at about two thirds volume, so it can go a lot louder, but uh, I don't think the neighbours would be too pleased about that. So, what I'm going to do is just disconnect everything to stop it all firing up. So, this plugs for the way the lights. Okay, so all I did, I'm running them both off uh, a one three cell pack, which is just tucked away in here. I made up a wire lead connector for it, so I just disconnect the sound units. 
and I can disconnect the lights for now that was just for display so there's the wire lead that I made up so small battery pack it's got to be minimum three cell for v4.1 sound units which are in there and then I've just done a splitter so I can use both sound cards okay uh, I've opened up the engine sound buttons if I want to change the engine sounds there are several different engine sounds this one was bespoke made for me by Mr RC sound he flashed the Merlin engine onto it for me because Merlin engine is not normally on the sound cards and I've opened up the volume ports both TT25s mounted on the foam blocks either side because the ply is just a little bit thin it makes it sound very tinny <coughs> so now that that's all disconnected you can see on the mix here with the mix switch off got throttle only if I flick the mix I've got throttle and rudder so one's working off the rudder channel on the receiver one's working off the throttle so really that one is the only one that's really operating this one is just dummying that but they both are proportional uh, it's just difficult to hear when it's on here because uh, there's too much noise. The, the water, when the boat's running in the water, would dull that down a bit. So, just unplug the lights again. So, all I've done is run up to here. I've got um, a wire lead here for one of the speed controllers for the throttle proportional, and then on the transmitter. Hopefully I'm tilting my head enough so you can see this. I've got a mix throttle to rudder. Uh, and I've got it to turn on on the mix switch so I can delay the start of the second engine if I want to. Just to give it a bit of a stagger, a bit more realism. That both engines would start maybe slightly apart from each other. I've out of channels on this now, so if I wanted it to do anything else, I'd need a 7 channel. Uh, there's my two outrunners. Uh, the direct drive straight through. The prop shafts, 5mm, go straight into the the can of the outrunners. There's no, there's no joints, there's no couplings, there's nothing in the way. It's 100% efficient. It's a water cooling plate there. I did that through the build. It might not even need it, really. I've noticed on running that doesn't really need it but it was easier to build it in as I was building the boat. These are making it nice and neat, it looks really nice and neat. Okay, so get the transmitter out the way. It's like a little jigsaw this boat. And then looking in here, it'll run up to six cells per motor. Uh, four cells is an optimum speed really. It'll run on three but it's a bit of a plodder. On five cells it's ballistic. I've had a data logger in here and uh, the GPS data logger, the Seagull Tree version, and it'll do 25 mile an hour almost, but it becomes very unsteady at that, so anything less than that, uh, anything more than that rather, it's a little bit hairy. Uh, this was a very fast boat in its time. Uh, it was designed to work at a Calshot, which is down by Southampton on the English south coast, and it was to rescue downed aviators in seaplanes for the RAF, hence it's a boat, but it does actually carry the RAF enzyme uh, this boat is uh, in its pre-testing configuration that's why it's flying vosper on the pennant uh, and in the day the blue and white enzyme said that this boat was under testing and may deviate from its true course most of the uh, promotional information for this boat back in the in the early days was was before the boat was handed over to the RAF so people that are running the RAF roundel on here yeah, that's after it's been handed over to RAF this is pre RAF handover little bit of trivia there <coughs> uh, 60 amp reverse internity speed controller so the way I've designed the boat is each side of the boat is running separate to each other so I've got one battery pack, one motor, one speed controller, one shaft, one prop on each side and now the sound units are running on that as well. Inside that little box there is the Ternagee light unit. So it's the feed for the cabin, it's feed for the uh, engine room, the sick bay, the wheelhouse 
the searchlight runs on a separate channel on an auxiliary channel and there's a little switcher unit in there again from Ternagy very very cheap these receivers are very cheap uh, and that's it that's the RAF crash tender uh, after doing a lot of testing with the boat I was able to supply prop shop with all my testing results and he made me up a pair of nice counter rotating um, props you'll see that the uh, they look really smart. These are just normal brass ones, brass rudders. I cut them down a little bit so they don't have that breaking action when you turn them. I painted them steel, look a little bit more realistic. Uh, the next project for this boat is going to be a smoke unit so that when the when the engines fire up, you're going to get smoke out of the exhaust. But for the time being, I think that's probably about it.